everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, my name is Lionel Rell. For those who don't know me, which most of you probably don't, um, I'm a financial advisor. I'm a credit counselor. I'm a real estate entrepreneur, and I also have a moving company. So just to give you guys a, a, a bit of an introduction about me, that's what I do and what I do for the community is I empower the community through the information of finances. So basically what we're going to be going over today is credit. Because during this pandemic, uh, a lot of people have been wanting to get their credit together. Now, when I talk about getting your credit together, the number one question that people always ask me when I sit down with them for the first time, and that question is, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? It, because a lot of people have this misconception that credit is a complicated thing and credit is a big bad monster in the room. And every time I sit down with someone or a client or a supporter or a friend of the family, I like to make the analogy like credit is a game. It might be a serious game to some people when it's not where it's supposed to be, but it is a game, meaning that we can play it and we can play to change our own circumstances. So going right along with this first thing I say, every time I sit down with someone, it's an evaluation of their mindset first, because if you don't believe that it could, it could be changed, then you have a lot of work to do besides the actual technical work of getting in there and tinkering with the system algorithms that apply to you. So the first thing we wanna talk about now is a mindset. So this is a quick start guide for those of you who have pen and paper and you want to get this information and you're wondering where to start, we're gonna go from A to Z really quickly. So by all means, if you have a question, Put it in the chat box or write it down because after this, I'm going to open up the floor to you guys so you can ask me any questions you guys have. But simply going through the first step is always mindset. So depending on your situation, the disputing process can be either slow or fast. The key is to be patient and execute the correct strategy for success. Keep in mind, Monuments take years to build, but only seconds to destroy. If your score is low, it's only one direction it can go, which is up. If your score is low due to neglect and bad decisions, just recognize it may take the same amount of time to rebuild. So it's always about mindset. Every time I sit down with people and I talk to them about their credit, their finances, it's never an assessment of where they're at. It's always assessment of where their mind is because that is super duper important to overcoming the game. So the next step would be you have to inspect to correct whatever it is that you want to fix. And we're not even talking only about credit. We're talking about the simplest things. So if you have a problem with your car, what are you doing? You're checking under the hood. If you have a problem with your toilet, what are you doing? You're checking the plumbing. If you have a problem with the lights in your house, the first thing the electrician is going to do is go to the fuse box. If you have a problem with a table in your living room or your house, the first thing you're going to do is what? Check the foundation. Check the legs. So it's the same ideology and theory which applies to credit. So we're looking for an equal footing on that theory. What do you check in order to see where you are with your credit? And the answer to that question is your credit report and your credit score. And most people don't realize that those two things are not synonymous in the sense of they are different, but they go together. So Whatever's in your credit report is an exact correlation with 
your credit score. So if you have some derogatory things in your credit report, that would conclude you having a bad or a low credit score. So the next thing I always ask is what's the five W's? So the first thing you wanna ask yourself is, what are you doing in this situation? Why are you here? What is the topic of this discussion? And the topic of discussion is credit. The second W is why. Why start this process? You're gonna start this process because you want to improve, maintain, and or maximize your report and your score. The next thing you wanna do is find out when do you wanna start the process. And if I'm in front of you guys or someone has brought me in front of you guys to speak, the answer to that is if you're reading this or you're hearing this message, the answer is right now and forever, perpetually. Remember, after your credit is restored, it's imperative to monitor it monthly. So the next W would be who. Who do you get this information from? So you get this information of your credit reports from the three major bureaus. You have Equifax, you have Experian, and you have TransUnion. And these are all independent bureaus. And these bureaus are independent and private organizations, not ran by the government. Most people have the misconception that these are all government uh, entities. They are not. They are separate and they are private. And you could get the information from these three bureaus or you could get the information from what's called a credit monitoring system or a credit monitoring service. So if you were to get this information from a credit monitoring service, there are two caveats that I think that you should keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, these services. So when you're dealing with these services, you got to make sure that you're getting your information or that information is being furnished from FICO. FICO is really, really important because FICO is 90% of the lenders are getting the information from FICO. So if you go to Credit Karma, Credit Karma is probably not where you wanna to go to get your information because Credit Karma uses a different scoring system and that scoring system is called Vantage. And if we're using simple arithmetic, if Vantage is the other half of that 90% equation, do you want the information from 10% of the industry or do you want the information from 90% of the industry? And then the other caveat is to make sure that it's coming from the information. So again, that's Experian, Ecofax, and TransUnion. Now, the next W is where. So when we're talking about where exactly to pull your credit report, most people or some people have credit cards. Now, if you have a credit card and you get that score from that one credit card, that's only one bureau. So they're only gonna give you one report and one score, and we all know that there are three, so you need to find a better uh, furniture of information. Now, there's two websites that I normally recommend. One website is called creditchecktotal.com. Again, that's creditchecktotal.com. And this website, it basically is now a subsidiary of Eco Experian. Experian brought them out um, a couple of years ago. But their interface works the same. And from my perspective, it's more of a cost effective way to check your credit score and report because they give you a seven day trial for one dollar and after that seven day trial is over you transition into a monthly subscription 
and I believe the monthly subscription is $29.99. But if you call in and you say, hey, you want to cancel, they may work with you and give you a lower price. And that lower price may be around $15.99, $16.99. Now, the other place where you could get your information from is called MyFICO, as in the FICO scoring system itself. And it's again, that's called MyFICO.com. And MyFICO.com, I believe MyFICO.com is more of a comprehensive course of action when you want to find out about your credit report and your credit score. So if you're talking about a free approach to looking at your credit report, you could get it from any lender that's trying to furnish your information for whatever you need. So any lender who pulled the hard inquiry for your report by law is mandated to provide a free copy of your credit report and score. The drawback is they only offer the information from one bureau. And again, like I said, we need all three to have and be fully equipped with uh, moving forward with our credit. So that's one free approach. The other free approach is you could go to this website. It's called annualcreditreport.com. Again, that's annualcreditreport.com. And this website, it gives you all three reports, but it does not give you the scores. You will have to pay for the scores. And again, I went over the paid approaches, which is a creditchecktotal.com and the myfico.com. So now the next thing is after you get your credit report, you need to now decipher the information on said report. So that basically means you're going to be looking at your personal information, the accounts on it, the public records, if you have any, and how many inquiries you have. And inquiry is basically when somebody is, uh, or when you are asking for something from an institution that is marked as an inquiry. Now, there's two types of inquiries. There's soft inquiries and there's hard inquiries. A hard inquiry is when you're asking someone else and a soft inquiry is basically when you are pulling your reports yourself. That's a soft inquiry. It will not affect your credit. So again, now we're breaking down into the actual reports, those labels that I just mentioned, the personal information, the accounts, the public records, and the inquiries. If we're talking about the personal information on this report, you need to be looking at certain things to make sure that is correct because the, your account is all about being whole. It's all about working in harmony. So if you're talking about your account matching up name for name, social for social, address to address, phone number, and employers, and employ uh, your past employers that you work for, all this information needs to match and it needs to be accurate along all three bureaus. So what information that shouldn't be on there is income, your gender shouldn't be on there, your ethnicity shouldn't be on there, your religion shouldn't be on there, and your political affiliation shouldn't be on there. And if it is on there, you may be in line to get a lawsuit for a big payout if someone that is reporting those uh, bits of information on your credit report. Because by law, and by law, we're talking about the FICRA, which is called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. By law, that information should not be on your report. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is accounts. So what account should be in this section? Revolving credit cards, auto loans, installment loans. Now, I know a lot of you probably won't understand or know exactly what all these things are, but again, if we're talking about getting more understanding, a revolving account is like a, a, a credit card or ongoing situation to where 
you're paying something and you're showing the ability to pay over time. And then we have auto loans. We all know what an auto loan is. And we have installment loans. And installment loans, an example of a installment loan is student debt, meaning that you're paying something a fixed rate each month and you're displaying to that lender or into the credit bureaus that you can be on time and make a full payment each month. And the more you do that, the higher your credit score will go over time. Now, if we're talking about what information should not be in this section, any checking account information shouldn't be here, any saving account information shouldn't be here, any prepaid card information shouldn't be here, non-delinquent medical bills, non-delinquent utility payments, rewards, earnings, and private loans, meaning if I borrow money from Yomi or Yomi borrowed money from me, that should not be on your credit report. Now, if somehow they got that information, that should not be there. I tag them with another lawsuit, more money for us. So the next thing is public records. What should be in this uh, section? Bankrupt bankruptcies, civil judgments, and child support. What should not be in this section? Tax liens and criminal history. So if, if any of these information is on this uh, report that shouldn't be there, you have all rights and grounds to have that removed. So if the next thing we're talking about is inquiries. I gave you the description of uh, inquiries. And that's basically a hard inquiry, which does affect your uh, report and your score, is when any third party other than yourself checks your credit. And simple and easy to remember. Now, the soft inquiry part is when you check your own credit, like I said before, or like I mentioned before. So keep in mind, hard inquiries can stay on your report up to 28 months. 28 months. But the secret is, Anything could be disputed. Anything could be disputed. Anything could be disputed. I say that again. So no matter how bad it is or how bad you think it is, anything could be disputed and you got a chance at making your report and your score whole and high if it hasn't been. Now, this goes back to, this next step goes back to your mindset. So after we have this discussion and I'm giving you the blow by blow on what to do, where to go, who to talk to, and what to look for, it's up to you at this point. It's up to you. So that this next step is make a move, bust a move. It's time for action. So if you've made it this far in this conversation, you have completed the inspection phase of credit restoration, now it's time for correction. So you have two options. You have the DIY, which is the do it yourself, or you have the DFY, which is done for you. So when we say do it yourself, I think that's self-explanatory, meaning that you look at your credit report and you start disputing these things on your own. And a tip for people that's doing if you are disputing on your own, there's a website for that. And um, I forget the website, what it is right now, but if you guys give me some time, I'll get you, get you the website it is right now. Uh, but you can basically have a dispute letter generated on your behalf based off of the accounts that you have. But the tip that I give is send it certified mail. Certified mail. So when you send it out, you have a timestamp of when it was sent out, who it was sent to, and when they received it. Because by law, they have 30 to 45 days to respond to you. Now, if they don't respond within that window, you have all legal rights to have that immediately removed from your report, whatever that derogatory account or marking is. So that's the tip for DIY. Now, the tip for DFY, which is the done for you, is basically pick a company that has a good response time, meaning that you call them. Now, during this pandemic, there's been a lot of uh, busy phone lines because this industry 
is on fire right now with people sitting home and they're getting uh, 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 economic stimulus from the government to do whatever they need to do and getting their credit together is what a lot of people are doing right now. So if you pick that particular way to do it, it's one of those things of once you start the ball rolling and you pick a good company that's affordable, that's knowledgeable, and that responds to you in a timely manner and can get your paperwork out within a timely manner, it's now up to you to manage that company that you paid for the service to get done. So, and if we, we if you want to go into that, we could also open up the lines and I could give you who I recommend that I go to, that I send my clients to, to get their work done. And um, the people who I use is called a National Credit Education Services. So National Credit Education Services, and they're a nonprofit. They're a nonprofit that does a, a credit restoration and they do an excellent job. They even help me. <laughs> so if you're talking about now, you're picking a company. If you're picking a company, there are three different uh, models. There are three different models of payment. Now, most people, when we talk about a company that does credit disputing, we're talking about a company like Lexington Law. Most people know that is the first thing that comes to their mind, Lexington Law. They know that the same way how they know Capital One is a credit card is because they do a lot of mass uh, commercials and marketing. So and if you're talking about a company like Lexington Law, the payment method that they use is called a monthly subscription, meaning that, hey, you like them, you decide to roll with them, and now they asking you for $100 a month until the process is complete. Now, a lot of people get lost in the, in the sauce in the sense of they feel like they've been paying six or seven months and nothing has been done on their credit report. And I think that's just due to them having a high volume of people and not having enough people to process all of the, the new clients coming in. So I guess that would be a downside of working with that said company. But again, we are open to do our own research and things like that. So the second model of payment or method of payment is called a pay per delete. Pay per delete, meaning that you would pay this person that's doing the work for you based off of how many items they can get removed. So let's say you've been laid on this one credit card, that's a marking. So they would charge a specific price for that and it would be that price times three because you would need to get it removed from three different bureaus. So, and that's called pay per delete. Now, when I first started and looked at this method of, of payment, I liked that this payment uh, method because you can pay as you go. But if you're someone that has a lot of derogatory items on your report, it can get really expensive really fast. That's the downside to that, I believe. Now, the last one is you could pay a one-time fee, meaning that someone is providing the service of uh, credit restoration or credit disputing on your behalf, and they're saying, hey, we're going to charge you one-time fee, and this is what we're going to give you. X amount of rounds of disputing, X amount of rounds of, of talking to us, and, and this is how long that we think it's going to take. A one-time fee. Now, if you ask me, I think that that's the best method. But again, we are all different. We all have different pockets. We all have different economic situations. So do whatever works best for you. Um, so after going through the, the, the methods of are you going to or deciding 
of are you going to do it yourself or are you going to get it done for you on your behalf? You now have the ability to um, get the ball rolling. So last and, and foremost, you do your part because if you've hired a service to do it for you or you've sent out letters on your own behalf, the last thing you have to do is now do your part. And your part is basically, now these are gems that I'm going to give you guys, but um, I want you to write these down or remember these gems that I'm going to tell you because when we're talking about playing the game, these are the rules that they play by. And if you play by these rules, you will win. You will win. I say that again. You will win. So number one, number one is pay down all revolving credit cards to under 10% at the end of every billing cycle. For instance, if you have an, a thousand dollar card, you need to pay that card to under $100 every billing cycle, every month, in order to get the optimum points for that credit card. Got it? Now, the second tip, golden tip is, Continue to make payments on time with installment loans of all kinds, of all kinds. So whether that be car loans, student loans, anything that's a loan type or installment loan type, those weigh more on your credit report than credit cards. But credit cards can crash, and I mean destroy, your credit score. If they're looking at your credit cards and they're saying that you're using way more than what you're supposed to use, which is that 10% number we discussed. Um, and another one is do not apply for anything during this process because when you apply for something that counts as an inquiry and you don't want more negative items on your report while your report is being worked on, whether you're doing the work or someone else is doing the work. That's working backwards. That's working backwards. So refrain from applying for anything during this process. Refrain from applying from anything. And if possible, if possible, add yourself as an authorized user on someone else's credit card. And this is what's called a trade line. Now, the criteria for a good trade line is it has to be at least three years old. Again, it has to be at least three years old. It has to have a minimum of a $2,000 limit. And it should be no late payments on this credit card. And if you add yourself to a credit card that has this criteria, it will boost your credit score and report because it's mirroring someone else's good credit card. Now, like I said, those listen to those words carefully. It mirrors their credit card, not their Regardless of what else is going on in their credit report, if you make yourself an authorized user on someone else's credit card and it's in good standing, you will receive a boost. Now, I know people and I have those also available if you guys are, are wanting to do a trade line boost. Now, remember, this is a temporary fix. So at some point, you will come off of that card due to the contractual agreement that you make with this person. But the whole plan is if you get a trade line and you're boosting your credit, you have an idea of what you're trying to do. Whether it be get a loan, whether it be get a house, get a car, whatever it is. And then once you're past that plateau of trying to reach the benchmark of said goal, then you could come off of that card. But it's also, working in duality with you working on your own credit report and then piggybacking off of someone else, which would make you double time the great. So the last part is 
basically, once you have all these things together, because I basically walked you through from A to Z of what to do, when to do, how to do it, and, and this is the short term. Now, there are more details into uh, what we can do with our credit, but this is the raw cut, unabridged version of what to do. The last step is strategize for the future. It helps for maintaining focus if you set goals. Keep in mind your why. Because if you're keeping in mind your why of why you're trying to get your credit together, why you're trying to raise your score, you're going to stay focused. You're going to stay focused on doing what you need to do, when you need to do it, in a timely fashion, so you can see fast results. So you can see fast results. So again, this is just a breakdown of what we can do with what we are trying to do it with and knowing your options. Life is all about options and it's all about your mindset and it's all about your strategic thinking on how you can achieve said goals. So in closing, after going from A to Z with this how to fix your credit basically is what I told you, this next thing is understanding that credit is somewhat of an advanced learning. So when we're talking about credit, people always come to me and they ask me about credit, ask me about, about uh, uh, how to fix this and how to remove that and what can I do because I want X, Y, Z. But it's also, I want you to understand that you should have some kind of foundation, some kind of building blocks of understanding when it comes to your finances. Now, when we have this workshop on the 1st of, of October, which is Thursday, from five to seven, it's a four-part module. This is gonna be the first two. It's basically about personal finances and understanding the financial foundation of economics. So if we're talking about getting the building blocks of what you are trying to do, again, it always starts with your mindset. How are you thinking about assessing? How are you thinking about maximizing? How are you thinking about strategizing? These are all things that we're going to break down and get into on the first. So basically, to give you a syllabus of what the first is going to be about, a part of these four modules, the first module is going to be about what is money? A lot of people can't answer that question. What is money? And then not only what is money, what is your money personality? A lot of people don't realize that they have a money personality. We all have a preconceived notion or we've learned something from someone about money. And that affects how we think about money to this day. So understanding your money personality and how you interact with money is extremely important to your financial future. And then number two, which is module two, is understanding revenue streams, understanding taxes, and understanding management. Management of your budget, management of your time, management of all things. So, and then that bleeds into the third module, which is also about actually creating these uh, lists, actually creating these um, paradigms to where you can see the difference between your assets and your liabilities. You can see the difference between your income and your expenses. And a lot of people don't realize that you're spending stuff that you may not even know until you uh, codify it, till you write it down and you have it in front of you. And then once you write all these things down, you have them in front of you, you can now say, okay, let's scratch this out. I don't need that. I don't need this. It's not necessary. 
And then last module of this workshop is going to be the intro to credit, which is basically what I just gave you guys uh, tonight over the course of um, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So, but it's, it's a little bit more in detail as far as breaking down uh, the inner workings of the bureau rules, breaking down the inner workings of how the information comes in and how it affects you. So now that we've been through the, the, the credit aspect of what to do, when to do, how to do it, this is basically like a quick start guide. And if you guys are interested and if we have uh, uh, enough people to do a uh, part two, I hope we also have a credit class workshop in the uh in the chamber so that's the next step so the first step is your financial foundation then the next step is your credit foundation then the next step is your business foundation then the next step is investment foundation so again it's all a, a graduated plateau to get you where you need to go so with that being said um I think we can uh, conclude or open the floor up for a uh, Q&A now. Yeah, thank you, Brother Lion. That was great. That was awesome. You really summarized a lot of stuff in 30 minutes, gave us a good breakdown. Um, yeah, and a lot of people have, that was interesting when you said people had money personalities. I never heard that before. That's interesting. I'd like you to break that down. But um, also I had a question about, um, you said paying down your credit card to under 10% each cycle. Do you have like strategies if somebody has like, you know, like a lot of like credit card debt, like um, I know it's like you could get like 0% cards. And then I had a friend who, Sorry, a lot of questions. I had a friend who had, had, had a card she had for years and the limit was only like 5,000 and she couldn't get an increase. And then she went to like some credit union and they gave her a card with like a $15,000 credit limit. So is there a way to like, how do you know where you're going to get the, the highest limit? Is it good to, um, you know, get multiple cards or I got a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, the first question, though, if we're talking about methods of paying down debt, there are three methods of paying down debt. Now, one method is a scientific fact that's proven, and uh, this guy, his name is Dave Ramsey, he uh, basically brought this uh, method to the forefront and made it famous, and it's called the snowball effect. And yes, the snowball yes. effect is basically meaning that you're paying your cards down uh, by the lowest amount of each card. So whatever card you have, that's the lowest. You're going to pay that one off. Then you're going to go to the next highest, pay that off, and keep going until you snowball it where it needs to be. Now, the second uh, option of paying stuff down is basically it's called the avalanche so you have the snowball and you have the avalanche so the avalanche is basically you're looking at all of your this is the smartest way to do it but again we're using psychology this is why the snowball effects works more but the smartest way to do it is you pay your highest interest cards off first because those are the one that's costing you the most money in the right. long run so and then the third way, the third, the third one, the third one escapes me right now. <laughs> I can't remember the third one. But um, those are ways that uh, uh, you can uh, pay down your debt in a timely fashion. And I think the okay, third. What about um, what about transferring to like a zero percent interest card? What do you think about that? You can transfer to a zero percent interest card, but again. It's not a interest problem that you have. It's an income problem that you have. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's all about the way you think. 
Right, right. And um, what's that? You asked, you asked another question. But, oh, um, like, yeah, I had a friend who, he had one car for years. Oh, okay, 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 like got you. 5, she went somewhere else, and they gave her a car for 15000 How does that work? So, all right, now, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like dealing in the community. It's like dealing in the community. So, are you going to get more from a big corporation or you, are you going to get more from the community person? Mm. So you yeah. got to look at the credit cards in that light. So if you have a, a capital one credit card, and remember, like I said, when you ask someone to name a credit card brand, that's the first name they th that they're most likely going to say besides an Amex card. So if you're looking at that idea of someone asking that question, getting that response, you got to think how Capital One is thinking. Capital One is thinking, we have so many clients. Why would we overextend ourselves for you? We have a whole bunch of people like you to where we're getting enough revenue. We're good. But if you have a small mom and pop type of or less known credit company, they're going to value you more as a customer because there are less of you. Mm, okay. So that's the long and short to that question. And if you're talking about bank accounts and uh, uh, credit unions, the major bank accounts or, or, or companies are going to be more stingy versus the credit unions. And if we're talking okay. about unions, you got to understand, you know, the whole paradigm of a union is to uh, be for their workers or be for their customers or be for their consumers. So they're going to naturally have more benefits to their accounts versus the major accounts. I have a question. Okay. Um, you said you work with national, I forgot what it's called, national what? National Credit Education Services. Right, so National Credit Education Services. So um, you said they helped you a lot. So um, out of curiosity, are you still with them for maintenance or since your credit is now, you know, repaired or you feel like, you know, they helped you, did you cancel like your services? Now, when we're talking about this particular company that I'm talking about, um, it's a one-time fee. Remember, I, I went over the whole payment method thing? Okay. It's a one-time fee. So you pay one time the price of three fifty, dollars and they give you three rounds of disputing. Now, under oh, normal okay. circumstances, most people get most of their items removed after the second round, and they don't even need the third one. But they're there okay. for you to support you if you need a third round. And even if you need a fourth round, they'll work with you. Right. Now, okay. once that's done, to answer your question in full, once that was done, I don't need them anymore. <laughs> I, I I don't, I'm no longer in need for uh, credit restoration. But right. you are still in need for credit monitoring. I believe right. everyone should have credit monitoring monthly, especially with the rise now of identity theft. That's becoming the number one crime in the U.S. now. Mm -hmm. What do you use for credit monitoring? I use my FICO. I use my FICO. Okay. And that's a monthly charge? Yes, that's a monthly charge. Okay, got it. I asked because I did work with licensing law like years ago, I mm -hmm. guess before they got too popular and they helped me clean up my report a lot. Like they disputed and deleted things that were even true, not true, whatever. They right. got things deleted. And then they offered me, um, I guess, credit monitoring or maintenance. And I was like, well, I don't need this. I don't want to keep paying you monthly when I could delete that expense. So I was wondering, you know, if that was, right, you know, the right move because yeah, they made my credit from poor to excellent actually. And then the other tips you said, like keeping my credit card under 10% and stuff right. like that. Right, right, right. So thank you. This was great. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Glad to help. Mm -hmm.
Oh, lying. Um, yeah, another strategy I heard about was using like. Why don't you um, let somebody else ask the questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, thanks, Yomi. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> he turned this into a personal consultation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. Y'all can unmute yourselves, ask your questions. The floor is open. We got the genius mind of Brother Lion on the phone. You know, you got the workshop coming up. Well, he's giving you all the game for free right now. So, but, but go ahead. I have a question. Okay. Uh, my question is, um, if you have a credit card that... Um, you didn't finish paying off, but for some reason you fell off the bandwagon. But now you want to continue paying it. What do you do? You keep calling and calling. They made offer, and I told them what I could pay, but then they're going back and forth with me. What do I do in this case? So when you say fall off the bandwagon, you're meaning that you stop paying the card. And yes. Okay. Yes. Now, the second thing is, and this is another thing you guys can all write down, um, we're talking about law now. We're talking about the law that governs the credit industry. One law is called the FICRA, which is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And then there's another law called the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collections Practicing Act. Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. F D C P A. So with these two laws, this basically gives you the statute of how wrong you have are responsible for paying your debt and your credit report. So I, with that being said, I ask you. How long has it been since you made the last payment? Um, maybe, um, let's say a year and a half. And where are you located at? I'm in Staten Island. Oh, so you're in New York. So this is one thing that I want you guys to uh, recognize and, 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 and understand. There is a, we all know what a statute of limitation is, right? Meaning how long yeah. something could affect you. Yeah. So if we're talking about the statute of limitations for debt, the statute of limitations for debt in New York is six years. Six years in New York. But the statute of limitation for credit reporting is seven years. Now, with said debt if it's gone past that amount of time it should naturally fall off but in your case you're only two years in so I would look at it depends on the amount so if you say anything more than five thousand dollars I'm like hey listen I may just wait the four years and let that go you know what I mean but again we're all different in all different situations but if it's less than $5,000 or $2,000, I will pay that. But before I pay that, I will get a letter from, it from my credit report first. Got it? Okay. Yeah, get a letter from the credit report first. Get a letter from the lender saying that, hey, once I make this payment, you're agreeing to remove this off of my credit report. And it's called a pay per deletion letter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, go ahead, Umi. You can ask your question. And another question. Also, with this, with this, um, um, with this other credit card that I have, I'm still, you know, I'm still being offered other credit cards, been sending me stuff in the mail, like you know, offering me, you know, cards, new credit cards. 
Uh -huh. Like um, we call it Capital One, but I didn't apply because I'm working on you know have you know fixing my credit and you know getting a home. So okay. I didn't apply for any of those. Okay. So what's the question? At the moment, I had no credit card. I don't have any credit card at all. Okay. So the only thing that was pending is that, which is, you know, the one I just told you about. But is it advice? Advice? Um, is it wise to like get another card, being that I don't have any? And again, we're we're talking about strategizing as a whole. So if you just mentioned to me that you're trying to buy a home, I wouldn't be applying for cards right now. But the idea of a trade line may be appealing to you in the sense of you can piggyback off of someone with a good credit card and get the, the same account information reflected on your report and boosting your score to make you look like a better lender. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Got it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Oh, so so yeah, so Lion, um I also heard about um using like a secured car to build your credit if you have bad credit. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> my thoughts on that is it does work don't get me wrong it does work but when you're talking about these secured cards to me it's 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 a time thing so instead of me trying to build up a card over the course of a year or two to have them just make me a, an official unsecured card, why don't I fix my credit in three to six months so that I can get a real card? Okay. But again, if you are feeling like you just have to have a car now, then by all means, go, do it. Because it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But if you're weighing out the options of what's out there, to me, I would just wait until I could get a great card on my own applying for it. And so you talked about getting added to somebody's credit card or adding somebody to build up their credit. Um, is there a certain age? Like, could I add children, my children to help build up their credit? Could I add them to my card or? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what other communities do. Other communities, they are well aware of this um, strategic <laughs> implementation and this is how when their kids turn 16, 18, they get brand new cars because they've been ex uh, exposing them or piggybacking, having that child piggyback off of this card for 16 years. Mm. So there's no age limit. You can put them on at any age. You could put them on at any age, and that goes with a grain of salt of they could be on your account, but they can't have a card to use. You understand? Because right, I think right. in order for them to have a card to use, that's like 13 or 14. Like it starts around there to where they can actually get a card to use. But if you just want to have them on, their, on your uh, uh, card and account, you can basically build their situation up for a very young age. Wow. That's okay. a great point. So it's interesting that you say that. So I would say, um, I guess the American Express everyday card is an exception because I guess I was being extreme, trying to think up way ahead. So I tried to add my um, eight month old baby to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're like, yeah, sure. They mail me a card. And then after they hit me with, enter the baby's date of birth because if they're not 13 or 12 or something like that, right, right. then we're not going to activate the card and we're not going to add them as an authorized user. So I would say, you know, I right. guess it, the, I guess there's a, a small exception, which was my credit card. I was like, great. 
So I guess I'll try again with my Capital One. And again, like I said, I want you guys to understand the differences of different cards and companies and how they work. So American Express is the world-renowned, prestigious card. So their customer service and their follow-up is top-notch. So they're going to ask you these questions when it comes down to it. But other companies, they just may send you a card and be like, okay, we'll take your word for it. That's it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Does anyone else besides Yomi have any questions, family? <laughs> Don't this, do me like that. I'm, I'm asking general <laughs> questions out here. <laughs> and, this, and this is the thing of what, what I say, too. Like, when we're talking about credit, people, it's a taboo issue. And that's why I say in the beginning, it's a game. Like, don't be embarrassed. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But we're here so we can all team together and create a bigger force and win for tomorrow. So, like, the, no matter how dumb you think the question is, yo, this is what I'm here for. So go ahead and ask the question. Get it off your chest, even if you're just curious. But we did speak about a lot, so you may have had your questions answered already. I can't hear you. You sound kind of muffled or far Ron. away. Come on, Ron. You gotta get some some better a better headset, man. <laughs> a little, a little better. Okay. Yeah, I have a question about uh, student loans. Um, what if the student loans got charged off? Oh, I can't hear you at all. Can you type? Can you type it in the box? No, nah, yeah. we still can't hear you, Ron. Yeah, I think he was asking about if a, can a student loan be charged off. I think he was asking something about that. If you if if that's the question that he's asking. I want y'all to remember this. It's Sally made to the grave, player. <laughs> it's Sally made to the grave. That's the only thing that's going to follow you for the rest of your life until the end of your life or unless it's paid off. They don't play about their uh, 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 student loans. Can you can you type your question in the chat, Ron? Okay, anybody else got some questions for Brother Lion? Yeah, I have a question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're hearing you. Okay, thanks. Now, um, I've done this a couple years ago, but then I stopped. Is there any app that you can recommend for like the personal money management that you can monitor how much you spend and you know what is your, your income and your expense? Yeah, so there are so many out there right now. <laughs> There's so many out there right now, but the first one that comes to mind now is uh, Mint, Mint.com. They're pretty good with like different tools to use. But again, I feel like that is such a abundant tool now. You could just type that into Google and just pick any one. Pick any one to use that you feel is easy to understand and easy how to work as far as the uh, uh, interface goes and take it from there. Okay. Because I was just, I used to just write mine down in the Steno notebook mm -hmm. so I can keep track. And then I did the app on my phone, but then I stopped it and I was thinking of going back to it again. 
consider that really helped me because it managed you um, to the very penny that you spent. You had to input every single thing that you did for the entire day. Got you. So, so the, what you were spending on a daily basis and what you could have, you know, stop, cut off and stuff like that. Got you. So, like you said before, I prefer you write it down. I prefer you write it down because whatever you write down, you're physically connected to, spiritually, really <laughs> connected to. So you're going to have a, like you said, when you went to do it online, you kind of stopped doing it because I don't, you're not connected to that uh, uh, form of communication as much as you're connected to you physically writing it down to where you can lay out in your mind because you have to speak it in your mind before you write it. So once you write it down, it's now committed to memory. So now you'll remember it now. So I prefer people to write it down in some way, shape, or form. Like all the all the tools and stuff, that's cool and that's good for you know us millennials, but it's it's it's, it's overrated. Okay, I'll okay. go back to my book. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So Ron says if your student loan got charged up to a collection agency. What is the best approach to get that back to a good standing? Now, got charged or to a collection agency. So when you say got charged or to a collection agency, you're talking about a company taking a student loan and they're now saying pay the student loan on behalf of Navian or Sally Mae, like what was the scenario with that? Uh, Sally Mae started off with a third party company. Right? So, they're the ones who collected it. Yeah, that audio is killing me. I can't hear nothing. I, I think he said Sally Mae sold it off to somebody else. Right, 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 right. Now, again, sometimes it's, it's, it's really based off of the amount. Like, cause, like I said, if it's a student loan, it's going to follow you forever. So you, eventually you're going to have to pay it back. But again, like I was telling the other young lady, get that pay per deletion letter before you pay anything. Have them agree to say, hey, if you send me X, Y, Z, this is going to be removed in X amount of time. And then once it's removed, you sh it's going to boost your credit report because now the derogatory item is not showing. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's the only thing on the, on the uh, collection agency side. Uh, the other side, I mean, you Now, you me, I'll let you translate that because I'm having trouble. <laughs> uh, I'll, all I heard was he said that's the only negative thing on the report. I, I don't know what he said after that. Okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think uh, you have your info in the chat, right? Uh, I'll probably read that. Uh, yeah, that's okay. yeah, I'll post his info in the chat, Ron. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you could give him a call if you want to talk to him about it. He's having a, what, when's the workshop again, brother? Uh, Thursday, October 1st, from 5 to 7 at the Cosmo Temple. And they could sign up on your website? Um, call. call or either, just call you? Yeah, call me or Brother Rojo, and they'll, we'll, we'll set it up. We'll take the payments, or you could come the day of and pay the day of. And what's the, um, you said it's four, four module. What's, what's the, um, the 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 pricing, the pricing is uh one hundred dollars for all four modules. For four different modules. Four different modules. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that sounds amazing. 
Okay, any any other questions? All right, thank you, Brother Lion. We appreciate right. you once again for extending the time and extending the knowledge. And um yeah, this was this was awesome. Got a lot of questions answered. And um yeah, we're gonna keep building, keep building credit. Oh. Nah, I'm I'm good. I ain't gonna hold you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, I never heard somebody talk about money personality. Can you break that down? Um basically money personality is it's 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 the ideology of there's four. There's four. And it's one is one is called your you could be a saver. So that's one personality. You could be a spender, that's another personality. You could be a, a monk, that's another personality. And then you could be a an avoider. You said avoider? Avoider, yeah. What's that? So that's the person that when you go to their house, they got a whole lot of unopened mail on their table because they know uh. the bills. <laughs> that's the avoider type. And the monk type? The monk is coming from that ideology of basically money is the root of all evil. So oh, okay, got they, they're, they're, they're adverse to dealing with money due to uh, moral constraints. Okay, okay. So it's like that, that portion is just getting into that and the pros and cons of each and basically how to, how to make all of them work together. Because we are all all four of them, but one is pronounced more than the other in each of us. See, like, by nature, I'm a saver. So it's like, but at the same time, you can, you can save so much to where you are now looked at as a cheapskate, and nobody likes a cheapskate. <laughs> so it's that, that ideology. Well, which one was the, the abundance ideology? Because, you know, you're dealing with abundance in the Ujamaa community right now. So which one was that? Well, we can make that one up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Thank you, Brother Lion. Thank you once again, giving us the time and the wisdom and the knowledge. And, um, yeah, family. He's a wealth of knowledge. You know, we need to tap in, you know, to our to our people in the community doing the work and who's actually done the work to get this knowledge. And, um, you know, we building from the ground up. So if you want to go more in depth, like he said, he's got a workshop. That's the first one is this Thursday. Um, I'll post, when I post the recording, I'll post his contact info. It's here in Brooklyn if you're in the New York area. And yeah, that's just an amazing price. A hundred bucks for four different modules. So yeah, definitely check that out. Definitely a good brother. Definitely a lot of info. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. We're gonna continue building another. Thank you so much for the lion. All right, all right, y'all. Thank I you, brother. It. All right, take care. All right, peace and blessings, family. Peace.